سعد الدين الحريري رئيسا لمجلس الوزراء On this December 24th, you're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nofel, and these are today's top stories. The cabinet holds a meeting at the presidential palace in Babda and approves a draft of the government's policy statement. A Christmas message by Maronite Patriarch Chadadai about raising prayers for the new presidential term under President Aoun to be able to confront the challenges in the country. And for the last time in his capacity as U.S. President, Barack Obama wishes Americans a Merry Christmas alongside his wife, Michelle Obama, reminiscing about the last eight years in the White House. The cabinet held a meeting earlier this morning at the presidential palace in Babda and approved a draft of the government's policy statement amid reservations expressed by the Lebanese forces ministers on the role of the resistance clause. The cabinet approved the statement, but the LF and State Minister Michel Faraon expressed reservations as for the clause on the role of the resistance. Speaker Nabih Bidri then called the parliament for three consecutive meetings starting Tuesday to discuss the ministerial statement. The statement will be referred to Bidri and consequently to parliament for debate and confidence sessions. The ministerial committee tasked with drafting the new government's policy statement finalized the draft on Friday evening after a second meeting at the Grand Sarai. Maronite Patriarch Shadadai is urging political reconciliation among parties in order to preserve the public interests of the Lebanese people. We pray for the success of this presidential term in overcoming the significant and aggravating challenges, most prominently maintaining national unity and concluding the process for political reconciliation, Rai was quoted as saying by the National News Agency. His comments were made during his annual Christmas message delivered from his seat in Kirke, east of Beirut, and he also called for the prompt endorsement of an electoral law that would ensure proper representation in the parliament. Restoring normal political activity will contribute to the preservation of public interests, Da'i added. The UN Security Council's vote demanding Israel halt settlements in the occupied territories is a big blow to Israeli policy and a historic day, Palestinian officials are saying. The resolution was adopted after the United States abstained, allowing the measure to pass by a vote of 14 in favor in the 15-member council. Israel's envoy to the United Nations, Danny Dannon, said in New York that he, his government had expected its U.S. ally to veto this disgraceful resolution. Before the vote, an Israeli official who spoke in Jerusalem had said that U.S. President Barack Obama and Secretary of State John Kerry were behind this shameful move against Israel at the U.N. The resolution demands that Israel immediately and completely cease all settlement activities in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. President-elect Donald Trump vowed after his inauguration to make changes at the United Nations. Police Special Forces arrested two men suspected of planning an attack on a shopping mall in Oberhausen in the West German state of North Rhine-Westphalia. The suspects, two brothers aged 28 and 31 who were born in Kosovo, were arrested in the city of Duisburg after information provided by security sources. It was not clear if there was any connection with Monday's attack on a Berlin Christmas market that killed 12 people. Police are still searching for a Tunisian suspect whose fingerprints were found inside the truck. Coming up next, The Tonight Show host Jimmy Fallon sings Christmas carols in the form of tweets. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching the 1620 o'clock news on Future Television. Christian pilgrims from around the world filled the square outside Bethlehem's Church of Nativity in the early morning of this Saturday as Palestinian security forces and city workers made last preparations ahead of Christmas Eve celebrations in the site believed to be Jesus' place of birth. As the sun rose above the church's spires, tens of tourists and local Christians queued outside the site holy 
The Christmas Bethlehem really can boast again that there is no room at the inn as relative calm in the Israeli-occupied West Bank brings pilgrims and tourists flocking to the town. Tourism is a major source of revenue for the Palestinian economy and provides livelihoods for about 5,000 families in Bethlehem, which has some 5,000 rooms in 46 hotels. Palestinian Tourism Minister Rula Ma'aya said 2.3 million tourists have visited the Palestinian territories this year, slightly more than the last. And for the last time in his capacity as U.S. President, Barack Obama is wishing Americans a Merry Christmas along with his wife Michelle Obama reminiscing about the last eight years in the White House for the holidays and bidding their fellow citizens goodbye as the first couple. Merry Christmas everybody. One of the best parts of the holiday season is spending time with the special people in your life. And for me that means getting some help from my best friend for our annual Christmas weekly address. Now given how our first Christmas weekly address went, I realized that Barack needed all the help he could get. <laughs> this is our first Christmas in the White House, and we what? Stop! Uh, what? You know what? You've got to stop it. All right, you got to get it together. You're gonna have to pull it together, POTUS. <laughs> Celebrating the holidays in the White House over these past eight years has been a true privilege. We've been able to welcome over half a million guests. Our outstanding pastry chefs have baked 200,000 holiday cookies. That's a lot of cookies. And Barack has treated the American people to countless dad jokes. They're great jokes. Not so funny. Although a few got a frosty reception. No, oh, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> this year's White House holiday theme is the gift of the holidays. And our decorations reflect some of our greatest gifts as a nation, from our incredible military families to the life-changing impact of a great education. And the greatest gift that Michelle and I have received over the last eight years has been the honor of serving as your president and first lady. Together we fought our way back from the worst recession in 80 years, and got unemployment to a nine-year low. We secured health insurance for another 20 million Americans and new protections for folks who already had insurance. We made America more respected around the world, took on the mantle of leadership in the fight to protect this planet for our kids, and much, much more. By so many measures, our country is stronger and more prosperous than it was when we first got here. And I'm hopeful we'll build on the progress we've made together in the years to come. Tomorrow, for the final time as the First Family, we will join our fellow Christians around the world to rejoice in the birth of our Savior. And as we retell his story from that holy night, we'll also remember his eternal message, one of boundless love, compassion, and hope. The idea that we are our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper, that we should treat others as we would want to be treated, that we care for the sick, feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, no matter where they come from or how they practice their faith. Those are values that help guide not just my family's Christian faith, but that of Jewish Americans and Muslim Americans, non-believers and Americans of all backgrounds. And no one better embodies that spirit of service than the men and women who wear our country's uniform and their families. As always, many of our troops are far from home this time of the year and their families are serving and sacrificing right along with them. Their courage and dedication allow the rest of us to enjoy this season. That's why we tried to serve them as well as they've served this country. Go to joiningforces.gov to see how you can honor and support the service members, veterans, and military families in your community, not just during the holidays, but all year round. So as we look forward to the new year, let's resolve to recommit ourselves to the values we share. And on behalf of all the Obamas, Michelle, Malia, Sasha, Bo, and that troublemaker, Sonny, <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. And we wish you and your family a happy and healthy 2017. Thanks and God bless. Jimmy Fallon, always known for his sketches and jokes on The Tonight Show, took to Twitter in order to read some of the best Christmas caroled tweets. Take a look. From you guys. Here we go. This first one's from Matt. Kells Huds. Her song is Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle All the Way. Oh, what fun it is to sit on an airplane that's delayed. Hey! LGA, baby! 
That is the most fun. Most fun. When you're on the airplane and it gets delayed. Ah, that nothing beats that one. I've already arrived. This one's from Spangy Ma. Spangy. Spangy Ma. Spangy Ma. Her song is. One, two, three. You better drink up, you better get high. Throw some shots back, get ready to cry. Your husband's mom is coming to town. <laughs> oh my God. Spangy Ma, you're naughty. She's not going to like what you've done no, to your place. She does not enjoy Stay in your lane, girl. Yeah. Spangy I'm gonna, Ma. I'm going to say this once. Stay in your lane, girl. This one's from at Mark with an M. Mark with an M? <laughs> Those Nark? A silent M? Oh. Mark, Nark. Uh, his song is, Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, Did you retweet my tweet? People cared about that stuff. Yeah, that's important. That's important. That's the real. Yeah, yeah. people cared about those. Real, stuff. real important. Yeah, this one is from at Love the Green Three. Oh, I love Love the Green. That's probably too. a golf reference. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Her, her song is. Uh, wait, so I was like, oh yeah, her song is. Lol, 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 lol. She's laughing in a good mood. Yeah. They love it. Laughing out loud. Laughing this out one's loud. from at Aid Grace. Her song is I Know When the Hotline Bling. Glory to the Newborn King. Is that a holiday song? Is that a holiday song? Yeah. yeah. Every Drake song is a holiday song. My nah, that's true. Yeah, we love Drake. Remember Mini Drake? Oh, Mini Drake's the best. Oh, yeah, we got to bring him back. We had a tiny little Mini Drake who would drive around on a, a dirt bike. <laughs> We gotta bring him back. Oh, let's write that we down. We gotta bring him back. We gotta bring him Mini Drake. He's sitting on every, we're sitting everywhere. Yeah, he'd run around. Yeah, yeah he's great. Uh, this was from at Jen Rose 419. Her song is Oh, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. I kept it short and sweet. I tagged a famous person who'll never see my tweet. Well, that's not true. Oh. Well, I saw it. I'm kind you of, saw it? You saw it. She tweeted that out. 140 characters. This she last one is uh, from at This Tall Auk Girl. Uh, her song is Putin, I really can't stay Trump, but baby it's cold outside. <laughs> I got the doorway, away, but baby, baby come it's on, it's cold. Outside. It's Russia. It's very cold here. There's a big wall uh, guys, out there. Those are tonight's your hashtag. This marks the end of a bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Cabinet holds a meeting at the presidential palace in Baghdad and approves a draft of the government's policy statement amid reservations expressed by Lebanese forces ministers. A Christmas message by Maronite Patriarch Shadadai raising prayers for the new presidential term under Michel Aoun to be able to confront the challenges in the country. And for the last time in his capacity as U.S. President, Barack Obama wishes Americans a Merry Christmas along with his wife, Michelle Obama, reminiscing about the last eight years in the White House. Those are your Saturday headlines live on Future Television. I'm Nuna Nelfad. From everybody here at Future News, we wish you and yours a Merry Christmas. Take care.